Hi, it's Simon. Notion is a great customizable platform to organize your tasks and projects in. As part of my step-by-step -step guide series to my Notion Life OS templates, from setting daily priorities to creating dependent task reports, here are five great to-do list tips anyone can use in Notion to make managing your to-do lists so much better. So whilst this is a great one-off video for anyone interested in improving their Notion setup, it's also number three in my step-by-step -step onboarding guide series to my complete Notion Life OS templates. And it follows on from my task manager guide. So if you are new to the channel, you might also like to watch my full tour video of that Notion setup first. Go to the full playlist as well for these guides. I've linked them both in the description below. So let's jump into these five Notion to-do list tips that make your Notion setup pop with organizational bliss or some other rubbish soundbite. <laughs> right, let's just, let's just do it. So I'm gonna now break down a couple of the additional columns that you may be kind of going, what are they for? In this system, we have something called daily priority. Now, the reason this is very useful, if we now just move a couple of things to all of them to today so that we can look more closely at this. Today, today. Okay, so we've got four tasks in here. This list is sorted by an order of things. The one thing is the one thing you've got to do each day, quick actions you want to get done really quickly, and then where you want to place things. Now, the idea of this is that you can put things in an order. So I'm going to do that in the evening. I'm going to do that one in the afternoon. That is actually going to be morning because I want to start with doing that. And it puts them in an order in the day. The advantage of this is if we look at the calendar view, it will put them in that order for you. So you can then check them off and work down it. That's all daily priority is for, to organize your specific day. So each evening, I would suggest you look at your view, move things around and you go, oh, okay, I didn't manage to do that. That didn't quite happen. Let's just make that a morning job for the day after tomorrow. You would clean everything up and then you've got a nice clean view of your tasks for the day. You can also then check your today view if you wanna do it up here and it will sit there like that. So that's good. This progress view is purely to show you subtasks. I would ask yourself, do you really need subtasks in your system? They're great for kind of larger jobs but I will show you more about that a little bit later on. I think it might be useful though for us to look at something called context, PPLT. I realize I haven't actually spoken about this for a long time on the YouTube channel. This just means you can put people, places, and things. Why would you do this? Well, you might say you just want to be able to do a quick search of all of your tasks by a certain context. So that I need to do at my studio. and it's gonna be high energy. Researching mailing list providers, I just need to do that at the computer. Plan out the shed, I need to do that at home. And book a holiday, I need to do that at home. And why don't we say this relates to the computer as well. So what that could mean is, I could just quickly add a filter by context. Great, just set that up. And then I can just click into here and I just wanna go, what am I doing at home? and it will only show me stuff by home. So you might go, oh, I'm meeting my mum. What have I got to do with my mum? Let's just quickly, I need to remember to do these two things, which don't have any relationship to my mum. <laughs> well, maybe the holiday could. Don't use it if you don't want to. It's another tool in the system. You can literally delete anything that you think is not for you. That is the joy of a template. Let's look at this, actionable. This is a formula, and you'll probably be going, what on earth is that for? Currently, everything is actionable because we're looking at dependencies here. So if I now view here and look at my task timeline and dependencies, I can take a little look. If we go to today, there'll be a bunch of stuff here. Why don't we say I need to plan the shed out before I order wood. I link it using this. Another way to do that, if we go back to the to-do list, if we move across, we have blocked by and blocking. So this task here is blocked by planning out the shed and you'll see it says that it's waiting. A better way to look at this maybe is to go to the actual project. If we jump into the project, you can see here that one is actionable and one is waiting. So you can see, again, in the timeline, that one is blocking the other. If this one was then clicked as done, 
this then is listed as actionable. And that is the idea of blocked and blocked by. If we close this back up, when you're putting tasks in, you might want to create a new task. Let's say it was build coffee station. Another task would be order coffee station items. And another task might be bring tools to studio. So when you're setting this up, you could quite easily say, okay, what's gonna be blocked by what? So building the coffee station is gonna be blocked by bringing my tools. And this is actually gonna be blocking build the coffee station. That's another way to input it. So currently this one will be waiting. So if I now add these into a project, let's add them to the YouTube studio without a due date and then click through to that YouTube Studio view. We can see that this is waiting. I can click on it and I can see what it's blocked by, great. So if I click order coffee station items is done, brings tools to studio is done, then that becomes actionable. So this is what the dependency system is and what blocked by and blocking is. And don't forget that you can in this home page here under this week's tasks, you can click to the timeline view where you can link different things to different items which will adjust dependencies. This is also most useful when you link it to subtasks. If you wanna learn more about how dependencies and subtasks work, I recommend checking out my subtasks video on YouTube. It will show you more about how the system operates and I think it will make loads of sense within the template. The next element you may or may not want to use is subtasks. I would suggest the best way to set new tasks for with subtasks is to do it in a project. Let's jump in and I'll show you an example. Let's go into my builder shed. If you wanna go further within it to plan the shed out, you might wanna add subtasks to it. I'll do an example. Let me just delete this one. Create new parent and subtask set. I have this button created. What this does is essentially create dependent tasks within the system and it gives you a little example of it. So I'm gonna create that set and this is gonna be plan shed build design. Now I can go down and I'll see my subtasks. Make sure this is set to that. You can just add them in here. I'm going to call the first bit mind map ideas, draw up visualizations, create detailed build diagram. Now you'll see essentially that my system has automatically put them in an order with dependencies. But the bit you really want to be looking at, if we jump back, we go into build a shed, is it's created subtasks that sit underneath this. So the only thing that's actionable within it is the mind map ideas. And you can see it's showing me how many subtasks are listed within it. Say so I've done that and it will then make the next one actionable. And this is how subtasks work. Another way to do it, if I order the shed, is to drop this button down and just add a subtask really simply. And I'm just gonna say, research sheds. I'm making this up, but you get the idea. And there you go. And again, if I want to make them dependent, I can just essentially click into here and remember to say that this main task is blocked by check budget and order. Great. So when I look into build a shed, I've now got two sets of subtasks that I can manage. Don't worry about this stuff if it feels too complex. I personally don't use them that often. I'll only use them for these kind of big bulk items. But remember, you could also create yourself buttons which are already pre-formatted for regular jobs. Just use my examples and recreate them into what you need. I think they're quite powerful solutions. The final thing on this advanced task management guide for this system is probably recurring tasks. And recurring tasks are actually really simple. If you wanna create recurring tasks, I would suggest you do it like this. Click into here. I have this duplicate a new recurring task. So I would select this template and duplicate it, rename it the recurring task, which could be do my weekly review, if you really wanna be sure. Come back out, click into here, and then you wanna set that new template to repeat when you wanna do it. I'm gonna say I'm gonna repeat it weekly on a Friday. 
and you can set the time it creates. Make sure in your recurring task you set this time zone to your own time zone so it works. Save that and that will now show me that it's already repeating and that will just turn up in the system each time and you will find it in the usual places when it's ready based on the filters. Great, that's the only option currently for recurring tasks in Notion. We're hoping there'll be some that will populate the calendar, um, but you know, maybe soon. So that just about does it for getting you onboarded with task and project management, using the weekly review, using the additional elements to the system. Hopefully that'll get you moving along with LifeOS. And just remember, this is here to be edited, reduced, simplified, added to as you wish. I hope it works for you. Now, if you are following these videos step by step in this onboarding guide to Notion Life OS, I recommend this one next for more on making most of the system and watch this one next for my favorite other productivity tools that might just change your world a little bit. It would be awesome if you subscribed here. If you haven't, turn on those notifications. Amazing if you hit the like button if you're into that kind of thing and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.